Well, it's the start of a brand new year, so it's time for something new and original. Something no one has ever done. Sequel month. And there's no better place to start than one of the worst sequels I've ever seen. I mean, this movie's just a hard sit, and it really makes no sense in context of the first movie. I'm talking, of course, about Terminator 2. Terminator, Terminator 2. Do not blaspheme the name of Terminator 2! How did you hear that? I can always tell when someone's talking about a Schwarzenegger movie, and that movie is his greatest work. It is an unparalleled masterpiece, and you do not talk shit about it. No, no, you're thinking of Terminator 2 Judgment Day. What? You really think I'm such a basic bitch I'd review official sequels? Nah, this is fake sequel month. There were some movies, terrible movies, movies so awful, no one would touch. Then came a Matthew, sad little Matthew, Matthew decided these movies to watch. For every good movie, there's at least ten bad. Today's episode, Terminator 2, Shocking Dark. <sighs> Happy 2018, Internet. I'm called Matt. And I can't think of a more appropriate time to review a Terminator ripoff than what I'm currently dealing with a copyright strike from the first Terminator ripoff I reviewed. That's just... So much fun. Fake sequels to popular movies aren't uncommon in most parts of the world, but they're the most popular in Italy for reasons beyond me. So common, in fact, all three movies I plan on looking at this month are Italian. So let's go. Terminator 2, obviously cashing in on James Cameron's film, The Terminator, was released just two years before the official sequel in 1989. It was directed by Vincent Dawn. Uh-huh. Let's see who he really is. <gasps> Bruno Mattei! Ah yes, Bruno Mattei. Occasionally called the Italian Ed Wood, and unlike some other people who've been compared to Ed Wood, it is a bit of an apt comparison. If you start to dig into Italian horror at all, you'll probably run across Mattei pretty quickly. And let me tell you, he's no Dario Argento. And guess who wrote this mess? I'll give you a hint. It isn't Clade Anderson. Clade? Did he mean Clyde or Claude? If you're gonna have a fake American name, at least have a real name! No, it's Monster Dog slash Troll 2 director Claudio Fragoso. So for those keeping score at home, I've now reviewed two Claudio Fragoso movies without touching Troll 2. And for those of you playing along at home, yes, he did call himself Clyde Anderson in Monster Dog. And the film stars... Who gives a shit? They're Italian B-movie actors. Okay, one of them was in the MST3K classic Warriors from the Lost World, admittedly one of the better movies on that show. But fuck that, let's talk about that fucking title. Yeah, they got their asses sued for calling the film Terminator 2, so any American release, including the one I have, is just called Shocking Dark. Which makes it odd to me that they were allowed to call a film Lady Terminator. And odd to me that they were allowed to make false copyright claims on people's videos about it. Haha, <laughs> I'm gonna keep derailing the conversation and take pot shots at the Lady Terminator people. Fuck you guys! Alright, we're moving on. <clears throat> Shocking Dark was apparently also released under the title Aliens 2. Um, you know Aliens was a sequel already, right? It also seems to have gone under the name Alienator. Sort of a combination of Alien and Terminator. Which makes sense because this film is a complete ripoff of Aliens. Why are none of the Terminator ripoffs I review Terminator ripoffs? My copy displays the Alienator title at the beginning, but later has the Shocking Dark title in the opening credits. 
It also has hard-coded Japanese subtitles. This DVD might not be... a hundred percent legit. I mean, I did buy it off of Amazon. This was the only DVD available, but, uh... You're just gonna have to deal with these things in fake sequel month. Worth noting also is the poster for this film bears a much closer resemblance to the cover of the Brian Bosworth film Stone Cold than it does The Terminator, but that may be pure coincidence, because obviously Stone Cold was ripping off The Terminator, despite having nothing really to do with Terminator. Seriously, why are none of these Terminator ripoffs Terminator ripoffs? As you'll remember, Terminator ended with Sarah Connor destroying the T-800 and moving on to have John Connor, who would eventually stop Judgment Day. So where else would the sequel pick up but... Venice, before the year 2000. Yeah, this film came out in 89. I was just gonna assume it took place before the year 2000. The narrator, who's in this opening scene and not the entire rest of the movie, informs us that seaweed is destroying the city's infrastructure and leads to it being closed down. And listen to the sweet jam they got for the opening credits. The first time I watched this, I thought it took place on a spaceship, but they're clearly still on Earth, so I have no fucking clue where this takes place. What's going on here? There's an SOS from Venice, sir. Oh god, they got Pee Wee Herman! Seriously, they stole that soundbite, right? Yeah. Hurry, they're coming, they're coming! Help! Dude, you're being chased by a killer alien and you're still somehow overreacting. Andre, it's you. Yeah! It's me! We're Raffles and the others. Yes! Drake, what's come over you? You have the dumb voice, Virus! Well, that guy's dead. In his calmer moments, he insists he's in touch with them. It, it's, it's almost as if he were... Well, that's it. Ah, sweet, movie's over it. It's a tubular corporation that wanted this mission done in the first place. I'll say. Our company invested millions of dollars constructing the underground viaduct that links us with Venice. The project was supposed to purify the city's polluted waters. As things stand, it appears that all of your millions have only gone to worsen the situation. Oh god, the exposition! So heavy! <sighs> Please, all members of the Megaforce will proceed to Assembly Point H immediately. Wait, Megaforce? Great, now we're dragging lesser known 80s sci fi films into this rip off shitstorm. All right, you bunch of pussies, I'm back, and I'm kicking ass. Is she breaking the fourth wall? Is she talking to me? Because all her men are standing behind her. You could that be yo, Coster. Ah, I can't look. It's two 80s. Ah, sweet. These guys know the Spaceballs salute. Hey, King. I'd appreciate if you didn't point that at me. If I would have known WAPs were coming along, I would have brought my anti grease spray! Hey, that's racist. Oh wait, this is an Italian movie. Carry on. So they're all gearing up to respond to the SOS, and the corporation that funded the mission insists they bring their scientist and one of their men along. Oh, and the name of the corporation? And this is Samuel Fuller from the Tubular Corporation. Tubular! Any questions? Yeah, just one. How do I get out of this chicken shit outfit? Actually, this movie steals so much from the Alien franchise, I'm surprised she didn't say that. You'll receive further instructions when you get to the shelter. Good luck. Thanks. Then the crazy guy from earlier starts shooting at them, and the science lady reveals she knows him because he's a scientist, too. Hey. Wanna hear the most annoying sound in the world? Actually, it's not that annoying. 
They find one of the missing crew members, but he starts choking the racist black lady and... God. You know, there sure is a lot of unnecessary screaming in this movie. There's something moving toward us! So let's just stand here. How did it happen? It's too complicated to explain right now. Um, no, it's pretty simple. We're being chased by some unknown monster thing and we need to get the hell out of here right now. They continue through the ship? Or... Maybe just a sewer system? I have no idea where this takes place. They continue through wherever and find a little girl. It's a reference to the movie Aliens. You guys get it? It's Aliens. Just wander slowly around. That makes for an entertaining movie. Please don't get in any hurry to have something... happen. Ben. After all of eternity, they finally seem to be in the same room as the alien. And more screaming. <coughs> I know it's not a problem exclusive to this movie, but screaming does not make your horror film any more scary. Or was it all a dream that not Newt was having? What bastards. They've done it. They've done it. Okay, so far this film has pulled from Alien, Aliens, Megaforce, and now Planet of the Apes. But not Terminator. I love how the Japanese character for DNA is just... DNA. I should clarify, I'm not totally sure these subtitles are Japanese. But according to IMDb, the Alienator title is from the Japanese release. So I just kind of put two and two together with that one. Apparently, the alien's DNA gives you a psychic connection to the alien. He said it was all the fault of the tubular corporation. Ah, crap. Now I need to know Japanese just to know what the fuck she said. Hey, let me just check Google Translate with that one. Oh. What do you know? Uh, someone bumped the mouse. I think the film just went to screensaver. Then they find their alien detector says the alien is right on top of them, but they don't see him. Never mind, there he is. Yep, that that's him, folks. That's the alien. Also, there seems to be more than one of them, but the way it's shot, they clearly had one alien costume. So there are never two of them in the shot together. I mean, that's fine, but it makes it hard to follow when you're not totally sure how many there are, or where they are in relation to the people shooting them. What's a reading? Hold on, was that one of those boolings? During the suspenseful entering a room that may be alien infested scene. A plus on the score, guys. They report that they're going into the Tubular Corporation headquarters, where it seems the creatures originated. Which only raises more questions about where this movie takes place. Anyways, the Tubular employee says they're not authorized to go in and insists they don't go. Either you come with us or I blow your head off! Take your pick. Do I have a choice? Uh, yeah. You can get your head blown off. He just said that. Then they stop to check the reviews for this movie. Negative, sir. But uh-oh, one of the creatures is in the room with the science lady and not... God, that, that joke sounds so awkward out loud. <laughs> because Newt and Not sound similar, and she's clearly a stand-in for Newt. It just feels awkward saying out loud, I'm sorry. Ugh, shocking dark. Nope. Yeah, it turns out... This character is evil. I don't know who that is. Wait. Wait, no. Oh my god, her name is Sarah. It you guys you guys got me. It is a Terminator movie. Clever, clever. Yeah, not again. Fast forward. Stop it. Everybody knows that the Tubular Corporation is nothing more than a big cover-up. Your largest shareholders are arms dealers and speculators like Levine. 
You haven't the proof to back that up. Nor the acting skills. Sweet, I can catch the new episode of Rick and Morty. Nah, it's just stockholder information. Let's break this down. Here's the groundbreaking action film this claims to be a sequel to. Here's the actual sequel to that movie. And here's this movie. The Turbula Corporation is the largest owner of the city's real estate, works of arts, and museums. And speaking of Terminator, we're almost in the ballpark as the evil dude turns out to be a robot. But then again, that happened in Alien. Really, it's still more like Alien. You still haven't realized that I'm immortal. I'm the most perfect thing ever constructed by the Tubular Corporation. I'm so perfect, I can get shot in the chest and it knocks my head back. Why didn't you kill us before? Because I was waiting for exactly the right time. That is to say, now. Now that all the important information has been revealed. If you blow the aqueduct, the mutation will be assimilated into the entire ecosystem on a planetary level. The whole world will be polluted. That's not my problem. Am I missing something? When did this become an episode of Captain Planet? You bastard! Brilliant. Electrocute the robot. And why is it that now that he's been revealed as a robot, his voice is way more robotic? This whole place is gonna go, but in 10 seconds you gotta be dead! Yeah, I give negative three shits about this movie, so let's skip ahead. Sarah Schmoner and her fake Newt are still in the facility with 30 seconds till explosion. But what do you know, they accidentally hide in the prototype time machine. Deus Ex Machina doesn't even begin to cover it. They travel back to before Venice was a deserted wasteland and everyone lives happily ever after. Just kidding, the robot man survived and followed them. Ah, oh, it's just like that movie, what's it called? A Terminator! But she throws the time machine remote at him, um, the end? We've got a lot of work to do. Before it's too late for everyone. Thus setting up for the sequel, Terminator 2 Shocking Dark 2. Too shocking, too dark. Oh my god, this was a painful sit. Half the time you have no clue what's happening, and the other half of the time, NOTHING'S HAPPENING! AND MY GOD, WHY IS THERE SO MUCH SCREAMING?! I mean it though, usually I can write a script in one or two sittings, but I had to just stop and come back later. This film was so annoying. It's just one of those movies that defies you to watch it. I do not recommend it, not that it's even an easy film to get your hands on. Seriously, as angry as I am at the people who own it, I'd recommend you stick to Lady Terminator over this. Or, you know, you could watch the real thing. And usually at the end of these videos, I'll have a card that'll link you to a if you liked this video for a similar review. But right now I don't have access to my Lady Terminator review. Hey, wait a minute. The, these DRM guys who gave me the false copyright strike. They're just a YouTube conglomerate. Which means I can start YouTube beef. Get this video to 5,000 likes and I'll drop a DRM diss track. Hell yeah! just might go off! Faster, fuck off!
Now that we're done with this blatant alien ripoff, let's move on to Alien 2 on Earth. <laughs> 